like at the moment it's just it just happened and when you look back like it's now four years then you realize how big it was and how big it is welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another episode of chum chat we have a very special guest today uh the viking arnor stigerson icelandic international baller but uh before we get into the conversation i want to make sure that y'all like share and subscribe if y'all are enjoying obviously uh leave a comment or, or, or follow us on the gram but uh seagull bro how are you doing today yeah good bro thanks for having me yeah of course bro thanks for taking the time obviously me and seagull are teammates so um you know we get along nicely we're in the gym all the time working i know seagull's taking it very seriously this time of year uh, you know, end of the season, really want to get fit and stuff. You know what I mean? So you really, yeah, really want to yeah. push. But uh, but uh, no, I, I think I want to start off things. Um, obviously, the topic of the world right now is, uh, you know, Russia and Ukraine. And for the guests that don't know, um, Sigu is on loan to Venezia and he plays for the team in Moscow. I don't know how to pronounce the team. So Sigu, it's on you. Yeah, it's CSK Moscow. Okay, CSK Moscow. And uh Sigu uh, plays for them, so obviously he knows the inside a little bit on, on Russia and Ukraine. But uh, I guess I'll start it off quickly with just like how is um, how is the uh, the league in Russia doing? Like they're still playing, everything's everything's normal for the players? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's normal, but uh, they are still playing, yeah. The league is ongoing and they are playing every week, so uh, but it's far away from uh, normal for them. Right, right. Yeah, you were telling me a little bit about, uh, you know, players, depending on what happens, they may be free agents or, or different things. Could you tell me more about this? Yeah, so uh, FIFA decided that players that are playing in Russia, the foreigners, uh, they could terminate their contract until the June 30. So, for example, if I was playing there, I could use that and uh, sign for another club until 30 of June. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah. And also, we talked about um, the Russian currency. Huh? So your contract, obviously, in Euros, secured. But other players may have their, their contracts in, in, what is it, Rubbles? Rubbles, yeah. yeah. Rubbles. So, obviously, this, this, uh, this currency is being destroyed. Like, it's, the value of it is, is worth nothing now. Mm. How is that? Uh, has that affected any of your close friends or family that are, that are Russian? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of them had money in the bank, and when you have money in bank in Russia, it's obviously in rubles. Um, so when this happens, it goes fifty percent down. I think it's fifty percent now down. So it's not a, an ideal situation for for the people and and my friends, there, my teammates. They are, uh, yeah, it's yeah. it's tough. Yeah, it's tough, huh? It's tough to see like a. Uh... I don't know. You obviously you like living in Moscow, right? Like it was it was a good experience, and obviously yeah. you would go back and and live there and play there, yeah. Yeah, I mean That's I have uh, two more years there, so so I guess now I go back there. What do you think the the future holds for you with with Moscow? Obviously, you said you have two more years, but obviously the situation and we don't know what's going to happen. But what do, what do you think will happen for you? No, I think I'll just have to see. Uh... Uh, how how things are going in the summer? It's not ideal to go back there. Obviously, I'm not uh, excited to go back when the situation is like that. And I know that uh, a lot of foreign players, not in our team but in other teams, are using this uh, thing we were talking about earlier, the contracts. So they are leaving Russia, and they will just see how the situation is in the summer. Uh, and I guess I'm one of them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy to think that. Uh... Like the team you play for, it's the same situation as one of the other players, uh, Ethan and Badu. Like everything is affecting it so so critically, you know. And it's um, it could be life changing, and it could be good or bad. You know, opportunities could open if you're a free agent, but obviously things could go bad if you you know you go back and then they shut the league down or or what could happen. You know, it's kind of scary, no? Yeah, yeah, it is obviously. And uh, what hurts me the most is seeing this happens to to people that don't deserve it, like. These people didn't do anything. They were just doing their job, and and this is affecting them so much. 
How would you say uh, like traveling into the, into the country as, as of right now? Like, how is that uh, process? I know you probably haven't traveled into Russia, but do you know of anyone who has or anything like that? Uh, I think it's almost impossible to travel into Russia now. You need probably so many papers and so some approvals and everything from the government uh, because it was tough before. Like, even before this, it was like you need a, a special visa and everything to, to go into Russia. Uh, I know that for a fact that it's almost impossible to get out of Russia as well now. They are just they are just flying to certain countries at the moment. So I know that for for a fact that a lot of players got really scared about that that they got, would be stuck in Russia. So they wanted to get out as soon as possible before the situation get even worse. Yeah, I can oh, imagine. Um you keep bringing up being a foreign player and um, whether that was in Russia, you were foreign because you're Icelandic or even now at Venezia, you're still a foreign player. Uh, I think Tanner was telling me that you're, you've been injured, you're coming off injury. I don't know if you've dealt with injury before, but, you know, we've spoken about it on other episodes. It's extremely difficult being a foreign player away from your family and having to deal with injuries. How has that been for you and how's the process of coming back been? Uh, the process has been good. Uh, I think what's, what's the most important thing when you're a foreign player is to have a, a good people around you. And uh, I'm really, uh, I connect to a lot of players in the team and we are good friends. We're making some good relationship. And that is so important when you have uh, tough times like injuries, when you're not able to do what you want to do, what you love to do, then uh, the most important part is how you feel off the pitch. And if you have good friends and good teammates, they, it helps a lot. Thanks, Sigurd. Yeah. I think we're good friends yeah. as well. <laughs> another another thing that uh that can help footballers to get their mind off of the sport obviously you see me and tan doing the podcast um do you have anything that you do in your free time obviously some people make music obviously you read i don't know what do you have anything that you do in your free time uh i play guitar uh so i like doing that in my free time i also like just playing computer games with friends uh, I read sometimes, yeah, but I'm not writing music. Maybe I will. I don't know. <laughs> Have you sang the Tanner yet or no? I'll no. tell you what, we get it. Man, not we yet. we get in uh we get into the gym, right? And Sigu has been our designated DJ for the past like two weeks, right? Yeah. So Sigu's on Ox and he's and he's chopping it up and he we always ask for the Icelandic songs. Because the Icelandic language, bro, I, I'm, I'm sure you've never heard it, John, unless you've played with a player from Iceland, but this language is like gibberish, bro. Like it's nothing, it, it's not even like, it's not even letters. Like this thing is crazy, but they, they get it on and it sounds good, bro. It's, it actually sounds good in music because they, they speak very little and it's mainly just the instrumental, but it's good, bro. And speak, speak some Icelandic for us, please. What do you want me to say? I want you to say, um, what's up, guys? My name is Arnor Sigurdsson, and I'm on Chump Chat. Sælir strákar, hvað segir? Ég heiti Arnur Sigurðsson, og ég er á Chump Chat. That sounds dope. Sure. That sounds dope, to be honest. I mean. It's clean, bro. Talking about being Icelandic, though, I want to ask you, obviously, you've been part of the youth national teams in Iceland. Obviously, you know, um, and you're, you're a promising player, you're a promising prospect. I'm sure you witnessed the 2016 Icelandic run in, your, in the Euros to the quarterfinals. That was iconic. Obviously, the Viking clap. How did that grow the sport in the country or, like, the following of the sport? Because um, us as Americans, obviously, the sport is barely growing. So maybe we hope for something like that here. Yeah, uh, it, it was massive. I mean, uh, I was 17 at the time, uh, and I wasn't even a professional yet. I, I, I became professional the next year. The year after but uh yeah it was massive and uh just just for the country and for the football like people started watching this Icelandic national team because it was like we're such a small country and we're so like we are three hundred thirty thousand, and for a country to achieve something like that is just yeah you know it's unbelievable and uh, the attention we got also the players i think it 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 helped helped us uh, grow as a as a national team and as a country as well. Yeah, it's crazy how something like that can bring a country together, especially in a in whatever time your country is in. But 
we were talking about it before uh, our or before our last game, but um, obviously playing for Iceland, it's difficult to to qualify for the World Cup, but it's very difficult to to win a World Cup. So obviously you play for Iceland. Is it not? Is it not like kind of a, a scary feeling that you may never play in a World Cup because of the country you play for? I think if you would have asked me this question 2015, I would have said, yeah, it's scary. Like every every player dreams about playing on World Cup and on the Euros. But uh, we were at Euros 2016 and then we reached the World Cup 2018. So it's absolutely not impossible. And that gave us, the younger players that were coming up at the time, like we could see that it's it's impossible. No, it, it is possible. And uh, so for me, because I was in there at the World Cup, I really want to achieve something like that. And I know I saw the players before do it. So so the squad is quite young now and I'm, I'm positive we will we will be there again. I want to ask you, was there any chance, because I saw that you started playing for the first team of Iceland in 2018, but was there any possibility of you going to the World Cup or was it never a possibility? So uh, 20 was, 2018 was a was crazy year for me. I started in Sweden, not even, not even as a, a starting 11 player. I was 18, turning 19 at the time. And it all happened really fast. I started getting some matches and I, I performed really good. And I played there, I think, three, three, four months. And then I uh, got sold to Moscow. But the, uh, the World Cup was in the summer, so I was still playing in Sweden. And I was still young and I was just upcoming. So when the World Cup squad was out, I wasn't expecting to be in it. But looking back, it, it's, yeah, it's, I want maybe everything to happen a bit earlier with Moscow and everything, because it was uh, talks ongoing before World Cup. So I think that even if I signed for CSKA before World Cup, the chance would have been bigger being there. That's Let me ask how that you. Works. Yeah. Let me ask you this. So now you're talking about the success of the Iceland national team 2016, 2018. It's 2022. Obviously, you guys didn't make the World Cup this year, but um, but do you think on the fans from Iceland they expect a lot more from you guys now, especially a young player like you who plays at a big team like Venezia? For you guys to qualify for the Euros, to qualify for the World Cup, do you think there's an expectation there now that wasn't there before? Yeah, absolutely. Because like they saw that we could do it, and then they believe we can do it again, and they want us to do it again. Because like we said, this this is just bringing the country together. I think for, I think uh, like around ninety percent of the country watches when the national team is playing Euros or World Cup. So it's a uh, it's huge and people love football there. So they expect a lot from us as well. That's beautiful. 90% of the country watching the yeah, team I think, play. I think, I think for real, 90 or 92% was watching the first World Cup game against Argentina. Wow. This is so, amazing. Wow, this is, this is some stats. Well, talk about pressure. You're talking about pressure from the Iceland fans. Now let's transition to Venezia. Obviously, you've been dealing with some injuries. Um, so you haven't been on the pitch as much, but you've you've witnessed what these guys are going through. Obviously, a tough run of matches lately for you guys. Um, you see the relegation zone now. The season's ending. You know, is there a kind of pressure now that you're feeling to to help the team stay up? Yeah, but I think I think the the pressure is good because the pressure is pushing us uh, together, and we have to stick together. And when we have pressure, the matches become more important. And when you have more important matches. You prepare you well. You prepare yourself. Like it's always this extra thing. What the the preparation, the mindset, and everything. When the game is important, you wanna make sure you're there. You you wanna perform. So obviously, it's not a it's not a situation we wanna be in. We we wanna be higher on the table, but it is what it is, and we have to uh, fight for this because now every every single game is is really important. It's a good answer. Now, let me ask you a difficult question. And if your answer isn't good, we can cut it out. Okay. But obviously, you're a lone player. Obviously, you're a lone player to Venezia. Some people would say maybe that a lone player won't care as much about you guys getting relegated because at the end of the day, you can go back, you know, if you get relegated. Is that true? Or do you care just as much as these Tanner, as, as Busio, as the guys who are full time signed to Venezia? Um, I think when you connect, to the team like that. When you connect to the players, 
because they are my real friends and obviously I'm a part of the team too and I've been now for eight months. It's easy to say that I, it's not there because I, w- I won't be here next year. So I'm not thinking about that we could be playing Serie B or we could be doing that. So I think they are maybe more thinking about the consequences while I'm more thinking about like get the job done, like stay up boys. But at the end, I think it matters just as much to me as it does to them. Good answer. Oh yeah, I think I think it does as well. I mean, you can see we have a lot of players on loan this year, and you can see. I mean, Siegel could back me here, but the players that are on loan are are when we lose a game or when a difficult moment happens, they're they're there just as much as us, and they they feel the pain just as much as us, and they want it they want it just as bad as us. So. I think I think everyone can relate to the to the we are one team and it brings us closer together and everyone's fighting for the same goal no matter what team you play for next year or what happens if we go down or if we stay up it's it's the same mentality all around so yeah absolutely Tanner was uh Tanner wanted me to ask you this obviously Tanner comes from MLS Busio comes from MLS you're a European guy you're a young European guy if an MLS team comes calling right now. What's your answer? Like, what's your, what's your view on MLS as a European? I think um, the MLS is getting bigger. And it's like, I think two, three, four years ago, it was more like for older older guys to go there, like close to retirement, maybe big players, big names. But I think now it's getting better and the league is getting more attention, especially from Europe. Um, and actually... Two of my friends are now playing in the MLS. Um, one is playing from New England. Uh, Trusterson, same name, Arnold Trusterson. I don't know if you know him, but he was playing there last year. And I spoke to him when we were playing national team together and he really likes it there. But if I'm, if I'm honest, for me now at this stage of my career, if some MLS team calls me, I think I, think I wouldn't go there now. But... For sure, later, later, later on my career, yeah, it could be could be possible. What if they come with a lot of money, more than you're making now? <laughs> no, nah, I don't think so. I think I want to prove myself more in Europe. I want to play in the big leagues and prove myself here first, and um, then, yeah. So is that the main but- driving, the driving force, like that you that Europe is the best, so you want to play against the best and try to win these trophies that you dreamed about? Is that like the driving force to stay in Europe? Yeah, yeah, it is. And obviously, I played Champions League and I played Europa League and I know what it is. I know what it is to play on the biggest stage and uh, playing against the biggest teams. And that's where you want to be. Uh, yeah, playing these top games, top leagues. Let's, let's just flash up the, the goal versus Real Madrid there and then the assist as well. Thanks, Anthony, our editor. Yeah, how was that? Because Tanner told me you scored versus Real Madrid. That's in the Bernabeu. That's insane. I mean... It doesn't get any better than that, obviously. Who, who was in that team? Do you do you recognize? That? Do you remember any of the players that were in that team that are still there now, or any big players? Yeah, a lot of them were there. Luka Modric, Karim Benzema, Tony Cruz, Sergio Ramos, uh, Courtois. They, they, Ronaldo just left this season, which was it was quite uh, sad, but still, it was playing at uh, the stadium and, and scoring. Yeah, I think it's just unreal, and I don't think like at the moment it's just. It just happened, and when you look back, like it's now four years, then you realize how big it was and how big it is. Yeah, when you're scoring against Madrid at like 20 years of age or however old you were, I mean, I don't think you want to go back to the MLS just yet. Um, but <laughs> did you did you ask for anyone's jersey after the game? Yeah, I got a Tony <laughs> Cruz jersey after the game. Nice. And who else did you get? Uh, Marco Asensio. Uh, so, so we okay. played twice. We beat them twice, and yeah, I got two jerseys. Very nice. Top players, top players in the world. Obviously, I, I know that's a crazy experience, and we had talked about it a little bit. That you feel that taste of Champions League, Europa League, or Cup game final, whatever it is, and you don't want to play anything else. You know, you you're hungry for those games. You're hungry for those matches, and it's not on the forefront of your mind, but it's always in the back of your mind that that's where you want to be. That's what you want to be playing every year at the highest level, playing against the best teams in each country. 
to win the best trophy. So I know you're hungry for that. We're all hungry for that. But you've had a taste, and I think that drives you a little bit more to to know what it is, to have that feeling, and to be hungry for it. So it's very interesting to to be in a position you are now and see where Moscow is. And, you know, they could be Champions League next year. You said they're in second place this year. So yeah, yeah they do you know how it is. Yeah. Let me ask you something, Arnor. Um, obviously, you might not be at Venezia next year in the coming years, but with Tanner Tessman there, Gianluca Busio there, can Venezia make it to Champions League? Uh, next year. Not next year. In the in these in these coming years, can they lead them? If they're in the midfield, can they lead Venezia to a Champions League spot? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They are two top players, and I think uh, with the right players around them and with the uh, with because I like where this club is heading. I like uh, they're they're thinking about everything, the the owner and and, and what's going on. So I think uh, with with uh, Tanner Tasman and Buzo, yeah, for sure they can do some great things. I love that. I love that. I think we gotta. I think we gotta. You know, keep improving and maybe improve in, in one or two areas on and off the field, but. Uh, I could see it. I could see it for sure. But it all starts this year on, on how we finish. But yeah. we have our we have our signature question here, uh, Sigu, and our our motto, our our life, our what the podcast is based around. And um, I really I'm expecting a good answer out of you. So far, you've been really good, solid. The fans have definitely enjoyed listening. If you're still listening, thank you for for being here. Um, but I want I want you to really think about this and uh, really answer it strong. So I want you to hit it with it, John. All right, bro. So our signature question we ask everyone at top athletes like yourself. What is your definition of success? And do you think you've achieved it yet? Uh, okay, yeah, it's a good question. I think success is when you read something that you dreamt of, like when you were a kid and you dreamt about being a professional. And when you read that, it's it's a success, you know. But then you have to think about what's your next, what's your next goal. And if you ask me if I've reached it yet, like I haven't achieved anything yet, you know, you know what I mean? Obviously I've been successful. Yeah. I think I've reached some success by playing at the highest level of football at a young age. But I think it's more about like that you have your goals. And you take it step by step. Like once you reach, once you're a professional football player, yeah, it's a it's a huge step. And but then you have to like that's not the end. That's just the beginning. So you have to always like push you higher. And I I think being successful, yeah, it's basically that. Like receive your goals. And once you receive a big goal, just aim for the next one. Interesting. So you think it's a never ending thing. You just, you know, you're always hungry for more. Do you think there's a place in your life where you'll be content? Like you, you won't always, you won't be hungry for more. No, I hope not. I mean, uh, I'm always hungry for more. And, and like we talked about being in this, uh, being that lucky to be a professional football player and to live your dream. Uh, I think that's what it's all about. And while I'm hungry and while I love playing football, the day I, don't want to go out and play football this is the day I retire so I think it's just about that it's just about enjoying what you're doing and uh, enjoy the moment basically so it's a good straightforward answer um and so just the last question for me bro you've been a fantastic guest um uh, thank you for being on but and if you're still watching make sure to subscribe but anyways you talked about goals succeeding with your goals what are your goals for this upcoming year for for the next two three four years or where do you see yourself uh, the main goal now is uh, staying in Syria, for sure. Uh, it's a it's a it's a weird situation now for me. Obviously, being with the Moscow and not knowing what the summer and how it will be the next couple of months. So I think I'm really really focused on this uh, the this this season, and then after I have to sit down and see see what will happen, and then I'm then I have to. Uh, yeah, create some new goals. But uh, like we said, playing in the top leagues, playing at the top level, 
that's the main goal. So, yeah. Solid. Do you have any goals for the national team? Yeah, be uh, a key player there. I've been, I played 20, 20 matches already. Um, and the goal is for sure just getting, getting this, being a, become a key player there and hopefully help uh, the team to reach some big tournaments. Do you think you can uh, ever be the captain for Iceland? I mean, I hope so. I've been, I was, I was lucky enough to be one of the young guys that came up and played with the players that, that were at the Euros and World Cup. Uh, most of them are now retired and or turning like late, late career. So I think I can hopefully use what I learned for them and bring it to even younger players. Still, I'm young, but I, I have a lot of experience. So yeah, hopefully I can again, and it will be an honor. We love that. Well, it's been it's been Sigu, Arnor Sigurdsson, the true the true uh, Viking, um, a different beast. He's a. Uh, I hope you enjoyed listening. He's had some great answers, some great insight on what it's like to be a player in Syria, but also a player on loan uh, in Syria from a team in Moscow, and and the situation going on there, and also as an international footballer that's going to reach reach high levels, but um. We appreciate having you on, but we have one last question we ask all of our guests as well. And um, it's, it's who do you want to see next on Chum Chat? I would love to see uh, our teammate and great friend, Ethan Ampadu, come on the podcast. Okay. We love that. We'll have to put some pressure on him. This will air out. It might be good exposure. You know, Chelsea in a difficult moment. Yeah. You might have What's some going on there. there. Yeah, could be some exposure for him. You never know. But uh, no, nah, man, we appreciate having you on. I know, you know, it took yeah, time for day. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to, good to meet you, brother. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick outro. Is there anything else you want to say uh, for the fans or any advice you want to give, anything like that? No, I think it was uh, pretty clear and we had a, had a good chat. All right, perfect. I'm going to go ahead and sign us off. So uh, Anthony would have had your Instagram popped up throughout the, the video. So if you guys like Arnor, um, and want to follow him and his success, go make sure and show him love on Instagram. Maybe listen now for him on Spotify with his guitar playing. Um, be attentive to him moving back to Moscow. Hopefully everything works out there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, and like we always say, go find your own success. Deuces.